Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the photo of the week on the Daily Critique. This week's photo of the week was created by Alona. Alona was a participant in our Seattle Inspirational Photography Weekend. At each of our weekend cities we have a pushpin show. You can bring an 8 by 10 inch print or smaller and we provide the backing board and the pens and we set up a beautiful pushpin show that we enjoy all weekend long. And then at the end of the weekend, Marty Jeffers and I choose a best in show from the pushpin show. And in addition to the winners uh, of the Best in Show from the Pushpin Shows being part of a drawing for a couple of Lens Baby composers, big thank you to Lens Baby for sponsoring our weekends, we're also going to be featuring um, the Best in Show from the Pushpin Shows on the Photo of the Week on the Daily Critique. So big thank you to Alona for sharing this beautiful print in Seattle and for sharing it with us here on the Mindful Eye. Alona shot this with the Nikon D700 70-200 zoom and uh, she chose 100 millimeters on this zoom. Exposure information is ISO 200, F56, and 1 400th of a second. And Alona has a really fascinating backstory here, and contained within the backstory are really a lot of the takeaways uh, from the video uh, today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just talk about what I like about this image. And to me, a huge takeaway from this image um, is the idea of archetype. I talk about that quite a bit. Uh, when I'm critiquing images, uh, the potential emotional and psychological power of um, photographing um, archetypal ideas. And an archetype is, is a symbol or a gesture, or something that's universally recognized. And this image is loaded with archetypes. The other thing that I love about this image is, even though it initially looks uh, like a, a graphic image that, that could be perceived as being very sort of flat and two-dimensional, to me this image has an outrageous layering effect in terms of layers of story that can really draw you very deeply into this image. Um, but it, in a lot of ways, it conceals um, some very important information, sort of leads your eye out into an area, but then sort of conceals it, the sort of overlay that kind of conceals the final layer of information. And, and uh, to me, this is an image that the viewer could really make up a lot of stories about. And in fact, when Marty and I were looking at the prints in the show, uh, Marty um, really liked this image. And I had sort of been going through one part of the show, and she said, come over here and look at this print. And she had sort of made up a story that she told me about the image, sort of what she thought about what might be the scenario. Um, what am I talking about when I talk about archetypes? Um, you know, one of the first things that I'm confronted with in this image uh, it's just this really beautiful color and decaying paint on what is a Jeep, and I know that from the backstory. But it's not just a beautiful color and texture from the decay. There's a whole series, uh, if you look at this close, of very powerful archetypal ideas. I mean, th these ideas um, are ideas that I've seen in pictographs and petroglyphs, um, a very, very sort of ancient symbol. And uh, it could be perceived to be a lot of different things. Um, ghosts, uh, demons, spirits, beings from another world. It's just really sort of amazing um, how powerful these ideas that have just happened in the paint are. They repeat over and over and over again. And they become more subtle and not quite as obvious. But boy, they're happening in a lot of places. Um, you also have uh, the very powerful archetype of, uh, of language. And um, any time there's any kind of text, it's just so visually heavy because it's typically very high contrast, and then it represents the archetype of communication. Um, and in this case, along with the decaying paint, you have this decaying sticker that says prevent forest fires. And so that starts to potentially, for the viewer, frame a story. And you could, instead of seeing this as decay, you could see it as a, as a, a car or something that's been burned up. And you get a real strong sense of that when you're looking through the glass here. And then you see the forest and the prevent forest fires. And all of that could start to come together to create a story. And in fact, that had a lot to do with sort of the story that Marty uh, had made up as the viewer of this image. You have a very obvious uh, archetype, uh, one of the probably the more uh, recognized archetypes on the planet, which is the idea of uh, the cross. There are all different types of crosses that are recognized all over the globe. And so this really confronts you. And again, in the context of the idea of forest fire and things that are decaying, very powerful. Then you have 
um, you know, the archetype over here that could be perceived as a web, a spider's web. You could think about the archetype of the spider and the web. You could think about the archetype of mosquito. Um, but definitely uh, just, just the archetype of cracked glass. A whole series of archetypes now are stacking up that could really start to push this story in a, in a, a very heavy sort of psychological direction. And then, um, you know, because of the sort of shallow depth of field and, and all the layers of information, uh, pretty hidden, then you see the, the concept of a forest. Most people are going to see that. They're going to see part of the trunks of trees. That not only ties into the bumper sticker, um, but to me, it really makes me sort of wonder a lot more about the setting um, uh, for, for, for this, if I see it as a car, for this, for this car. And there's another real powerful concept here, which is the idea of shooting through things and shooting through openings, doorways and windows, very powerful archetypes, but it also can, in a still photograph, create a really strong sense of there being uh, different rooms in the shot psychologically have a big impact. Just a very, very powerful image on the level of story, but from a design standpoint, one of the things I really want you to look at today and think about as a takeaway is looking for chances to either photograph archetypal ideas or in your image editing to start to push and bring out archetypes because these are things that can really bring the viewer a lot further into your image. Now here's the backstory. Alona says that she was uh, she's attracted to colors and stories in the environment told by old, rusty, and or abandoned things. And then she goes on to say, whenever I'm stuck in traffic and time is on my side, I pull away and seek out photo opportunities. My camera is always with me. And she says on this particular day, she was waiting for an endless freight train to pass in West Seattle. She swung out of the line of cars and then drove into a semi-industrial neighborhood and about a block away she found this rusty old Jeep. She said the way the light was striking the colors it really stood out so she stopped to photograph it. She said after getting very close she could now see that the rearview mirror had become a very powerful symbol, a vehicle and its final resting place so to speak. I mean that to me that backstory is just one sentence after another that has so much inspiration and so many takeaways for you to become a better photographer. First coming up with a list of project ideas. You can either remember it in your mind or journal it. And Alona is saying that she has this ongoing thing that she's attracted to, which is uh, the idea of decay or things that are abandoned. I just cannot encourage you enough to have a list of project ideas. That way you're never in the position of saying, well, what am I going to photograph next? And it's so cool that that's followed by this idea of Alona saying whenever she's stuck, and she has that in quotes in traffic, and then she says, and time is on my side. Most of the time when we're stuck in traffic, we're freaked out and we're cursing the universe. And I just love the fact that Alona totally turns that around into a time where she can sort of just uh, sneak out and instead of feeling like she's waiting to get out of the line um, and to be creative, a very, very powerful idea. And the other thing um, that I really enjoy um, about this story is how she's driving along and she sees this beautiful light on this color and then she just goes for it and she acts. And so much of the time you know, we don't even have our camera but if you start to make a habit of always having your camera which is the first part of Alona's story to be bold and to to make action your habit don't hesitate when you see something that draws your eye to be bold and to get right in there and uh, and go to work and I just love the fact that Alona and her backstory, you know, references seeing the archetype of the cross here and realizing how it could tie in a very powerful way um, to um, the rest of the design of the image and thinking like a storyteller. So just a great image and um, I'm very inspired by it. I hope you got a lot out of, out of the video today. We'd love to hear your feedback about the video and we would love uh, to see you at a weekend event. Um, uh, if you're part of TME, um, you received an email where we have the, an electronic flyer for our weekend, and you can forward that email. Uh, if you are not in a city where we're coming, but you know somebody that's, uh, that's in one of the cities that we're visiting, we'd love for you to forward that email um, on to somebody. And um, you can also contact us about getting a discount for your camera club or uh, your meetup group. There's a contact form there in that email. Um, big thank you to all the people in Seattle. We just had such a great time there, and we're looking forward to meeting you in another city. Thank you so much for being here on The Mindful Eye, and I hope you have a great weekend.